Okay, before we move on to our next test for series, um, let's review the geometric series because the next couple of tests actually are based off the geometric series idea. So remember, if you have a geometric series, to get from one term to the next, you're just multiplying by the same number. So 24, 12, 6, 3, 3 halves. You can tell that it's just times a half. But another way to get your R value is if you take a term and divide it by the term before it, right? 12 over 24 is 1 half, 6 over 12 is 1 half. So for any geometric series, you can divide any term by the term before it, the previous term, and that will give you an R value if it's geometric. So a sub n, the next term is a sub n plus 1. If I divide a sub n plus 1 by a sub n, that gives me my R value. Okay. The next test then, let's, let's look at this series here. Okay, I've got the series n squared over 2 to the n, and I start writing out some terms, 1 half, 4 over 4, 9 over 8, and you'll quickly notice it doesn't look geometric, right? I'm not multiplying by the same number to get from one term to the next. But an interesting thing about some series is that even though they don't start out behaving like a geometric series, as n gets bigger, it starts to, okay, quote unquote, behave like a geometric series. Meaning, eventually, from one term to the next, it is starting to look like a geometric series where you multiply, where you're multiplying by a constant term. So to give you an idea of that, let's take our just to show you, let's take our hundredth and our hundred and first term, 100 squared over 2 to the 100, and the next one would be 101 squared over 2 to the 101. Let me show you what I mean by that. Okay, if I computed the R value between these two terms, we saw that I could just take A sub 101 divided by A sub 100. I could take this term divided by this term. Okay, those are big numbers, but if you flip the bottom, there's a nice way to simplify this or get an idea of what the answer is. First of all, you have 2 to the 101 on the bottom and 2 to the 100 here. Remember what that means. There's 101 twos multiplied together, and here there's 100 twos multiplied together. So all 100 of those twos would cancel with 100 of these twos, but leave you with one left in the bottom, right? We're going to have a 2 in the bottom. Okay. Then I could take the 101 and 100, since they're both squared, I could think of this as 101 over 100 squared, okay? Even without a calculator, you can tell that that's pretty close to one. So I can tell this whole big mess is gonna simplify to something, remember you have a two in the bottom still, and then times this one, it's gonna be about one half. Now, it, it, if, you, if it was a geometric series and it was, had an R value of one half, you'd be inclined to say that the series converges, right? That's, that's less than one. But now what's the ultimate test? I computed my R value for my hundred and hundred and first term. The ultimate test would be to take the infinity term and the one after that. So how we do that is we take our A sub n and our A sub n plus one term, n squared over two to the n, n plus one squared over two to the n plus one, and on the next page, I'm going to take that. That limit. So we want to show that R equals one half. I'm going to put quote unquote R because it's not really geometric series. Um, so I, I kind of that's my notation. OK, it's sort of like a geometric series. So I'm going to let, do the ratio of a sub n plus one over a sub n. A sub n is your formula that you have in your series. A sub n plus 1, just replace your n's with n plus 1. I'm going to flip and multiply, and the simplification is identical. If I have 2 to the n and 2 to the n plus 1, that means I'm going to be left over with a 2 in the bottom. And we know if you take the limit as n goes to infinity, n plus 1 over n, that's going to go to 1 squared is still 1. So my R value will approach one half, my quote unquote R value. And of course, if it was equal to one half, that would, our conclusion would be that our series converges, which it does. So this 
is a new test. This is called the ratio test, okay? So if you take the limit of a series of a sub n plus one over a sub n to get some number r, quote r, then the way to think about it, just like a geometric series, if the absolute value of r is less than one, it will converge. If it's greater than one, it will diverge. One difference though, a geometric series, a pure geometric series that has an R value of one would diverge. But with the ratio test, we can't make any conclusions with that. If, if the absolute value of R comes out to be one, then no conclusion can be made. We have to use maybe some other test, okay. A common question on using the ratio test, how do I know when to use it? Well, um, we saw in the previous problem, if you have a series that has an exponential function, like two to the n, but it's not purely geometric, that's often a good um, clue to use the ratio test. Another telltale sign is if your series has factorials in it, then it's quite likely, I'm not saying it would always be the ratio test, but it, it, the ratio test is often used for factorials, um, series with factorials, okay? So let's see how that works. I've got n to the fourth, three to the n plus one over n factorial. Um, and by the way, if I tried to do the nth term test, right? We, we can't forget about that. If I take the limit as n goes to infinity, you know, we don't have any derivative formulas for n factorial, so I can't use L'Hopital's rule you know, how, how are we going to sort this out, right? Both, all of these are generating big infinities, right? Exponential functions. So it's factorial. So it's, it's hard to say, right? So we're just going to go straight to the ratio test. Okay, so how this looks, you saw a sub n plus one, you replace all your n's with n plus ones. So this will become three to the n plus two. That'll become n plus one factorial. Now we are dividing by a sub n, which is this but you're always gonna end up flipping and multiplying. So I'm timesing that by the reciprocal of a sub n, okay? Now to cancel that out, just take each piece from uh, you know, where it came from. My exponential functions, I have one more power of three on the top than I do on the bottom, so I'll be left with a three on the top. Um, I can group the n plus one to the fourth and the n to the fourth and make it both to the fourth and the inside will approach one as n goes to infinity. And then to cancel out a factorial, um, if you have n plus one factorial and an n factorial there, remember that by the definition of factorial, the first term in n plus one factorial is n plus one and then times n and then n minus one, n minus two, n minus three. So, once you get to n, you could express the rest of it as n factorial, which will cancel out with the top, okay? Um, it's kind of, it's, it's easier to see if you think about numbers. If I had five factorial over six factorial, and I just express six factorial as six times five factorial, right? Then I could just cancel those out and I'd just be left with a six. That's exactly what we're doing here. So what does this all lead me with? I had a three left and I have an n plus one. And if I take the limit as n goes to infinity, that will give me zero, which is my quote unquote r value, right? Um, now you'd never have a real geometric series have an r value of zero. You would never get a term here, right? You would never get any other terms. But in this case, we, we can, that can happen. And since it's less than one, our series converges by the ratio test. Okay. One more example. Now this one's definitely, um, a definite candidate for a ratio test, right? I've got factorials in both the top and the bottom, right? This is not going to be, uh, easy to sort out with any other test. So if we do the ratio test on this one, um, one thing to point out here, remember to find a sub n plus one is you're replacing the n itself with n plus one. So it's not two n plus one factorial, it's two times quantity n plus one factorial. Okay, over three to the n plus one, and then n plus one factorial, and I'm gonna square that. Dividing by 
that formula, which we're then going to flip and multiply here. Okay. So this actually becomes, if you distribute the two, 2n plus 2 factorial, 3 to the n plus 1. And then what I did was, because I'm squaring it, that means I have an n plus 1 factorial and another n plus 1 factorial. Uh, <clears throat> this will come to the top. And I get, did the same thing. I split up the n factorial squareds. OK, so now the cancellation part. If you expand 2n plus 2 factorial, the first term of that is 2n plus 2, then 2n plus 1, then 2n factorial, right? The remaining terms would be that, which could cancel out with the bottom. Um, my exponential function, here's another way to see it. You can split up 3 to the n plus 1 as 3 to the n times 3 to the first, and then cancel the 3 to the n. So you're going to have a 3 in the bottom. And then I did the similar thing we did on the previous problem. Each of those n plus 1 factorials can be written as n plus 1 times n factorial. n plus 1 times n factorial. So I can get those n factorials to cancel. That's going to leave me with these two terms on the top, which if I FOIL that out, gives me 4n squared plus 6n plus 2. And then I'll have a 3 times n plus 1 squared left over on the bottom. If I FOIL this out and distribute the 3 and do my limit, the powers are the same, I'm going to get 4 thirds as my r value. And since the absolute value of that is bigger than 1, in this case, our series would diverge. OK, so there's the ratio test. Uh, the next test after this we'll talk about is the root test.